Spiritual Disciplines What makes Christians different from everyone else is prayer. Prayer is our way of communication with God, and it is an excellent spiritual discipline which connects believers to God. Prayers keep believers relevant. But how do we pray? The disciples had to ask the Lord Jesus to teach them to pray, according to Luke 11 verse 1. His disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. They were taught the Lord's Prayer, or the model of prayer, of how believers ought to pray. Now when we pray, we need to start by acknowledging who God is. The Bible teaches in Psalm 100 verse 4 that, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him, and bless his name. From there, we move on to confession. We need to confess everything that needs to be confessed, and that has to be confessed. As a believer, find a way to fight things that you need to get rid of, things or sins that easily entangle us. As Paul puts it in Hebrews 12 verse 1, which says, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. It is a fight. It is a race. It is warfare. Get rid of everything that can slow you down. Quickly cleanse yourself through confession and the Word of God, because the Word is like water to your spirit, according to Ephesians 5 verse 26, that He might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the Word. Reading the Word of God cleanses us, and it washes us as well. So whatever sin that may be in your life, it has to be confessed and gotten rid of. It may be anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, whatever it is, get rid of it and make sure there is nothing blocking the pipeline. Do all it takes to be in right standing with God. God himself wants to commune with us, and this is why he says in Isaiah 1 verse 18, Come now, and let us reason together, says the Lord. They shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as white as wool. God himself is inviting us, and saying, Come, let us settle this. God wants you and me to make things right with him, because he is a merciful God. He is a God who forgives, and he desires us to maintain a good relationship with him. He wants us, as his children, to remain connected to him. And unconfessed sin breaks our connection with God, because he is a holy God, according to 1 Peter 1 verse 16, which says, be holy, for I am holy. Sin hinders the flow of the Spirit of God in our lives. It breaks our relationship with God, according to Isaiah 59 verse 2, which says, But your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. By the way, sin is a transgression against God, or it is simply lawlessness. Now when sin is repeated over and over against the knowledge of God, it eventually becomes iniquity. Any kind of relationship that needs to be maintained, a good relationship, it needs maintenance, it requires cultivation, and it has to be sustained. In a healthy relationship, there has to be good communication for it to work. Now your relationship and my relationship with God can only be maintained by prayer. It is cultivated and deepened in prayer. It is watered, nourished, and fed by prayer. Your relationship has got to be founded on a good foundation. It has to be founded on prayer and on a clean and a purged life or a purged heart with no hidden things or unconfessed sin. Psalms 51 verse 7 says, Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. A purged life, or a purged heart, is a heart that is free from impurities. It is an uncontaminated heart. It is a purified life. To purge is to remove sin by cleansing. 
It is to get rid of sin, to get rid of guilt and defilement. God wants our lives to be free from sin and impurities. And as we go before the Lord, we go to him as my God and my Lord, my Deliverer, my Saviour, my Redeemer, my Father, and the Captain of my salvation. We are to approach his throne of grace with boldness, but at the same time with humility, casting all our burdens upon him, for he sustains, according to Psalm 55, verse 22. Now there are three aspects of prayer. 1. Prayer as a delight. Psalm 122 verse 1 says, I was glad when they said to me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Prayer time has got to be a delightful time to a believer. A child of God has got to be excited to have a one-on-one encounter with the Lord God Almighty. The psalmist's heart was set on worshipping God, and he was delighted by just the invitation to go and be in his presence. What is it that delights you? I pray that prayer may be one of them, because prayer brings pleasure to God. So you and I, brethren, we need to do that which pleases our Father. Psalms 84 verse 10 says, For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. As children of God, we are to delight ourselves to be in the presence and in the house of our Father, doing our Father's work. The psalmist is encouraging us that time spent in his presence is time well spent, and we would rather be in God's court than anywhere else. A child of God is to delight himself in being a servant in the house of God, waiting upon God's people. A believer has to delight himself in being a church greeter, a church attendant, or an usher, than to hold a prestigious post among the wicked. 2. Prayer as a Discipline Psalm 55 verse 17 says, Evening and morning, and at noon I will pray, and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. The psalmist made it a point that three times a day he would pray and call upon God. He found it within his work schedule to accommodate this discipline of prayer and devotion. Prayer is one of the spiritual disciplines of a Christian life, and when I speak of discipline, I am not talking about being spanked or being punished, but I am implying that prayer has to be an integral part of a functional believer. Prayer has to be the most important activity of your life. It is a spiritual training for the purposes of godliness. Prayer is a godly habit, which requires thorough commitment that one needs to organize themselves and come up with a plan of how best they can execute this activity of prayer. 3. Prayer as a zeal Psalm 42 says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, So pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? The Bible encourages believers to pursue a passionate and zealous relationship with God. A believer has to be zealous for prayer and have a yearning for prayer and, as a child of God, has to have a longing for being in His presence. When you have zeal for prayer, You are willing to pray. You are not forced. You are energized for prayer and motivated to pray. As a child of God, you have to have this drive to call upon the Lord. Prayer will make us have a closer walk with God. Prayer will make us grow and mature in the Lord. God bless you.